do you feel like the Rangers play is declining or is it just the the you know the sample size the the losing seems to be piling up and the shutouts are, are piling up are we going to flip back to the good times here pretty soon with this baseball team Sans? yeah I just think that it's going to be a, a roller coaster season like this and it, it you know maybe sometimes you look and say well it's because of the opponents and then maybe sometimes you look and say well uh, it's in spite of the opponents because, you know, I think you'd look at the Angels and the Mariners and say, hey, the Rangers got a good shot to get things going in the right direction. And, uh, well, the Astros probably not a team they're going to have their way with, uh, their way against. So I just think it's the nature of a, a young team, a, a team with a bunch of unproven guys. And uh, so I, I think that, you know, over the, uh, the course of the season, we're going to have, uh, you know, seven or eight more stretches like this and, and seven or eight more stretches like what we had last week uh, against the Astros. It's just going to kind of be up and down, very roller coaster like But they should beat the Mariners in the next three games, right? Like, really, they just hate two-game series. This one's a four-game set. They That's should catch true. fire right now. Fair, fair point. Other than against the Astros, they do really well in four-game series. For whatever reason, they have this aversion to winning a series opener. Uh, it's it's remarkable how bad they've been in series openers, and you know, I, I, everyone like all the writers want to try and read into it. Like, is it this? Is it that? I just I think it's kind of random sampling for a team that's eight games under five hundred. They're going to lose more games than they win, and uh, just like if you flip a coin eight times, it doesn't mean it's going to be heads or tails. You know, for each, uh, and I think that's kind of what's going on with these series openers, but. They, for whatever reason, can't win series openers, but you're right, Jeff. They do a heck of a job in these four-game series, and so I think they are due for three straight wins. Well, nice. that's good to know. I, I, I don't want to be depressed anymore, but i got to ask you a question here. <laughs> i got to ask you a question. You saw the, the thing that happened with the Pirates and the Cubs, right? Javi yeah. Baez and all that? Yeah. What's the strangest thing, Jared, when you've been broadcasting you've ever seen that's gotten in a run? Oh, man. Uh... Well, you know what it is, actually. This is uh, I, probably pretty easy. Do you guys remember in 2015, Game 5, Rangers-Blue Jays, uh, Ruben oh. Odor at third base, Shinsu Chu, the Shinsu Chu hitting, someone hitting, and Russell Martin, the Blue Jays catcher, was throwing it back to the pitcher, and it deflected off of, I thought it was Chu, but it, whoever was in the box, it deflected off of their bat. And it's a live ball. And Shin Su Chu came home and scored. And, you know, first of all, I think people are wondering, was it a live ball or not? Uh, and then the other question was, you know, is the, the batter in the way? But, I, I, gosh, I think it was Chu. He was in the batter's box. I just remember it was Rugi uh, who came home and scored. And there was this big, like, 10-minute delay debating, you know, whether or not that should count for a number of reasons. And uh, it was, at the time, the run that gave the Rangers a lead that, made us all believe that we were going to head on to the next series and take on the Kansas City Royals, but obviously it didn't go down that way. Elvis had the rough seventh and then the Bautista home run off of Sam Dyson. But I would say that uh, that is probably the, uh, the, the wackiest run-scoring play that I can recall. Is yeah. that when the Blue Jays started throwing beer on the field right after that? Yeah, the beer, and I wanted, I don't know if it was bad. It was beer and beer bottles and all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, Poop. good yeah. memory. What I learned, Jared, is I, that, that Baez, he had to get to first base for that run to count. I, I didn't yeah, know that. They didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that because I was thinking once the run scored, I was thinking like, okay, they got the run. If he's out, he's out. But Bassett's Were the like, runner celebrated for a split yeah, second? The, the, like, yeah, yeah, we the, did. And he was like, oh, no, no I got to get the run. first. We haven't done first. it yet. Yeah. yeah, so I didn't I didn't know that. I was like, going, and Bassick was trying to explain it to me. And I'm like, oh, I just kind of thought he just kind of got in a pickle there and then they got the run home. So Yeah, it's that was a wacky play. And uh, I'm glad – I want to say Tyler Anderson came out and said, hey, like, you can blame Will Craig, and Will Craig, the first baseman for the Pirates, definitely deserves the, the, the biggest piece of blame pie. But there are, there are eight other guys in the field, however many guys in the dugout, who uh, all they had to do was yell first, just go to first, go to first, and that could have been avoided. Will Craig deserves most of the blame, but that really was a team effort there for the Pirates. And that – that's an embarrassing play. Like the, the play I just described with Ruby scoring, that's just like a wacky bad luck play. Uh, that is an incredibly embarrassing play and uh, in demonstration by the Pirates yesterday. 